Coach Damon Stoudemire in the building. Clap it up for that, man. Good. How you feeling, Coach? Man, I'm good. I'm good. Just, uh, you know, adjusting. Adjusting. How you like Atlanta, first and foremost? I love it. You love it? I love it. You staying out of trouble? I'm staying out the way, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, tell me when... Um, it was more, you know, jobs, of course, that probably was offered to you. What was special about the Georgia Tech job? Three things. Um, Georgia Tech, uh -huh. the ACC, and Atlanta. Uh -huh. So I said, um, I had been in college before, but for those that didn't know, I was with the Boston Celtics, so I had a good job. Uh -huh. So thing was, was that for me, it's quality of life as well. And so uh -huh. if I'm going back to college, I want to be at a good... You know, the good school, good conference, good city, and tech checked all the boxes. Right, gotcha. Gotcha. Nah, that makes sense. And then at home, y'all y'all ain't nothing to play with at home. You know what I'm saying? Y'all five yeah. and one. So yeah. it's like it, you got the home court advantage when yep. you're at home. Nah, we 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 solid at home. We got to get the road together, though. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you do got to play road games. Right, but, uh, true. You know, we're, we're coming. It's early. Um the results, you know, in a month and a half, two months, you know, uh -huh. I, I'm happy but not content, not right. satisfied. Uh -huh. So you know it could be better. No doubt. So look, they be saying most point guards, you know, end up being coaches because, you right. know, like y'all were floor generals and stuff like that. Right. But when did you know and realize, yeah, I, I might try this coaching? You know what? It was when I I was in between playing. I just really was bored. Uh -huh. And that's when... You know, I was working kids out, doing some different things, and I was like, I just dove into it. And uh, a couple coaches had said it, but I was like, I'm not trying to really do that. Right. Because it's time consuming. I don't think people understand the time oh. you got to put in. It's really Especially time. Especially on the college level. Yes, yes. So it's time consuming. So um, I volunteered. You know, I was lucky. You know, I, you know, I saved my bread. So... Mm -hmm. You know, I was living in Houston at the time, so I volunteered at Rice University. I did that for about, I don't know, about three months. Uh -huh. And then what happened was the Memphis Grizzlies called me. Now, a lot of people don't know I got that job because the owner who since passed away, Michael Heisley, I deferred some money, so dude owed me money. So he told the coach, who the new coach who got the job, Lionel Hollins, he told Lionel, We'll call Damon because I owe him some money anyway. That just show you how cheap Heisley was. Yeah, like, that's crazy. He's a good dude, though. And so yeah. that's how, and, and, and honestly, that's kind of that helped. Kinda, yeah, yeah, it helped, and that's kind of how that's kind of how I got my how I got my feet wet in. Uh -huh. Yeah, man, running with it ever yeah. since. Yeah. So it take it back, like you being. I remember you from being on the Trailblazer. A lot of people do. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so just let's just talk about that that era of basketball when you played with the Trailblazers and how how was that? Because it was like you know y'all was in the at the time the most dominant conference. Yeah. You know where everybody yeah. would say, but it's like y'all had a complete team. Like yeah, yeah. Now it was, you know, the way they put that team together. You uh -huh. know what I mean, it was it was it was too deep at every position. Uh -huh. um, you know, we had guys that. They had been all stars, and we kind of all came together. You know, it was, you know, at that time they. I don't think they were putting those type of teams together at that time, and so right. we all basically were franchise players, and they brought us. They brought us as one. Um, you know, we had probably the highest payroll in the NBA at the time as well. Uh, we were getting their results. Obviously, there was two dudes out there in LA that we had to go through. So that was the biggest. That was the biggest challenge, and. You know, I think for for me when I look back on it, it was a hell of a time. We had a we had a heck of a run, but you know, we didn't get it done. But the one thing I will say about Portland, forget the ball, like we all stay connected. You know what I mean? Still so, to this day, yeah. To this day. Okay. So some of the some of those dudes on some of those dudes on that team are my best friends, you know, Rasheed Wallace, uh -huh. Bonzi Wells, he's on staff with me. Um, Steve Smith. You know, he lived out here in Atlanta. He came. He, and he came played to, with the house. Yeah, he yeah. came. He came to. He's come to several games. So for me, it's the, the connection. We've all stayed connected. Right. And uh, got brothers for life on that team. Greg Anthony, Stacy Ogman, Pip. Um, so 
Um, you know, we just, you know, we all stay connected, and that's that was the biggest thing about it, you know. Um, it was just, it's, we left something on the table. I think we all know that. Yeah. But, you know, it is what it is, but you look back on it again, just having that connection, having brothers for life, you know, I think that was the biggest thing. Yo, 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 what's up? This your boy Nav Green from Broken Play, here to talk about prize picks. And if you haven't heard about prize picks, clearly you must just got out of jail. So let me speed you up with the process of the real world. Prize picks. Man, you pick six people. Six people, more or less. Any sports you could think of. College basketball, NBA, NFL, college football, bowl games are coming back. With that being said, all you're doing is more or less. Six people, 25 times your money. If you put up $100, you can win $2,500. Who else doing something like that? And what's so good about it, if you use the broken play code, they gonna match whatever money you put in on your first deposit. Say if you put in $70. That means you got $140 to try to win some money. You can't beat that, man. Get over there to Prize Picks and tell them that we sent you. It's available in over 30 states. And if it's not in available in your state, drive to the state closest to you. This is something you can't beat, man. Christmas time coming. Get this kid, get these kids the money. You want some good gifts? Prize picks is the way. Now, recently, she just went on and talked about the slam heard around the world. Was you in that <laughs> locker room when it happened? Come on, man. Yeah, I was in the locker room. You know, and this uh you know, it was, it was, it was, it was tricky during that time. I would say, you know, what I mean, it was tricky. You know, she'd explain that part, but it was, it was other elements to it. So you it had know, a ripple effect. Oh yeah. So, you know, once, you know, once Rube came back, you know, I think you know Zebo got suspended, but once Rube came back, like it just, the team was never really the same. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't. You know, that's what happens sometimes, right? And I don't think, I don't think nobody at that time knew the ramifications of it, you know, and the And they had to stay teammates for a long time after for that, sure. right? Oh, yeah. like we was like we was teammates. So, you know, it's it's you know, you hit a teammate like, you know, and it was it was taken to the streets for a second. Um, but what I will say is 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 uh, you know, we got past it, but Never it didn't help it, but it was, it, you know, it was, you know, I mean, it was, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was crazy. It was crazy to say the least, but I was right there. And, you know, it was just, like I say, you got families, you know, so, you know, Zebo got a family, you know, Rube got a family and it just kind of, you know what I mean? You got the family room. I mean, it was, it was, it was a little awkward for a while, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But, you know, um, <clears throat> Yeah, it was yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> you know, it was a lot. So, coach, do you know like with you being like a professional NBA player and you know what I mean, what you did in the league, like you weren't no, you know what I mean, you weren't no bomb. Does that help with recruiting? Like when like if you go to the parents and they 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 parents they remember you, you know what I'm saying? Does yeah. that help with recruit? It helped with the parents, but it don't help with the kids. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Truth is, like, talking to kids today, you got to build a relationship with them. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, I think uh, if you think about, like, what's going on now, it seems like we got this friction between the older players and the younger players. Gotcha. You know, and it's like, I, you know, I think as with anything, it's with your own kids, right? You know, they'll trust you once they believe in you and know you care, so you got to, man, you really got to holler at these kids. I mean, these kids is different now. You know what I mean? And then you're talking about this NIL money, the different things that come with it, um, the instant gratification. I mean, we was coming out, we didn't have social media. Right. So it made it a bit different. I was thinking about, when I was coming over here today, I was thinking about this. I was like, man, they ain't come out cell phones until, for real, for real, like 95. I mean, you had to, you know, dope boys had the big phone. Uh -huh. You know, you might have knew one person in the hood that had, had, had a phone in the car. Uh -huh. But other than that, like... Cell phones for real didn't come out to about 95, 96. Man, I was, I was my rookie year. Uh -huh. 
And even then, you yeah. had to be having some money because yeah. you ain't just calling <laughs> nobody. Because the shit ain't free tonight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Truth is, everybody they had the burner phones. Yeah, you buy a burner phone, it might last for for one day or three years. Uh huh. <laughs> nah, for real. <laughs> Who's some of your favorite players growing up? And watching Isaiah Thomas, um, Tim Hardaway, Kenny Anderson, Kenny Anderson, Kenny A. Yeah, Kenny, Kenny A. Was he was he was that dude? Like for me, he was he was that dude, lefty, a little bigger than me, but. It, you know he was he was that uh -huh. dude, but like, you know those guys were probably, you know, in the forefront. Chris Jackson, aka Mahmoud Abdul Rauf, you know, uh -huh. but uh, you know those guys, uh, you know, really really studied them. Um, but Zeke, you know Zeke then Zeke drafted me, you know, that was like pff, my idol. Like so, you know, I'm getting that game every day. You know, on the floor and off the floor. And I know you were asking buku questions like on some like everything. Just, yeah. Everything. I'm soaking up everything. Mm -hmm. Every day. Soaking up everything. So Yeah, gotcha. So look, Jamal, he told us to ask you. He was like, he was like, ask Dane. The being around Michael Jordan. Or like being, he was like, it's like an aura around him or something. Like Man, he different. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. <laughs> like for real, like again, I don't know if it's because you know social media platform, but like, right. like he was a star. Yeah. So the best example I could give is like I went on a Nike tour. We went on we 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 went on we went on we went and did these clinics for Nike. So we went to Japan. So it was it was Mike. It was Charles, it was myself, it was JK, and it was Michael Finley. Gotcha. So we did the we did a clinic in Tokyo. And so we get to Tokyo, you know, and um we get to the clinic and it's fifty five thousand people. Tokyo Dome sold out. So, you know, Damon Stoudemire, you know, J Kidd. Mike Finley, Charles Barkley, Michael Jordan, man, stand ovation. There's levels to it. And that's just one example. I've been, you know, it's when he walks into the room, I've seen the star of stars, like, just kind of bow down to dude. Yeah. Like, he just, he like has he a, here now. Yeah, he has a, he has, <laughs> yeah, he has a persona. He has a persona. He has a persona to him. And so, Again, that was the first time. So this is my rookie year, and that was the first time I ever had really been around him. And he was mm -hmm. calling me Mighty Mike. And so they were over there playing the cards on the plane. And, you know, I'm like, man, he asked I want to play. I'm like, I don't got that kind of bread, bro. Yeah. You know, I can't do it like you, but I just, I'm listening to him. I'm just kind of, kind of just being around So he him. had the bread on the table with they been. Oh, man, Mike was talking so bad to those dudes. <laughs> Mike was, listen. Mike was working. Mike was playing cards with the dudes that work for him, beating them, telling them, right, "Well, it's cool. I don't got to pay you that week." That's how he was. That's a cold. That's a cold. <laughs> they, I mean, they but, playing but, but, for they live. <laughs> real yeah, competitor, just, I, though. I, I'm just telling you, like I I've seen a lot. Mm -hmm. I've been around the star stars, but I just never been around. Somebody that can numb the room the way he numb the, numb the room. And I don't care. Athletes, entertainers, other billionaires, like it don't, it don't matter. I just never, I never, I never seen it like that. I've I've never seen it like that in my life. But I'm saying for you to come in your rookie year, you around, around this, like, I know you like. Boy, I can't wait. To hey, man, I look. What? It barely was cell phones. You couldn't it couldn't call nobody and hit them. Yeah, wasn't no texting yeah, going on. Nothing. Wasn't none of that going on. You gotta wait till you get off the plane <laughs> to tell the story, and you ain't excited. You know what I'm saying? Like they can't believe it because you ain't got no picture. I'm telling you, what I'm trying to tell you is I've been around the creme de la creme. Mm -hmm. I just never seen nothing like it. Never. I've, I've never. I've never seen nothing like it. I never seen a dude walk in the room. And and just numb it like that. 
talk about so speaking of you know being a rookie, you know obviously you were the first pick ever of Toronto, right? Mm -hmm. What was that transition like? Because you know I don't know if you had been to Toronto before. I don't know if you had knew anything about Toronto, but obviously it was, you know, it was different. I think you might have had what it was two or three different coaches your first three years in Toronto. Right, right, right. What was that? What What is it like being you know the 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 first pick of a of a expansion franchise like that and just adapting to that? Man, it was great. I'll be honest with you. Like I didn't really know what to expect. I had been to Toronto one time, and um, being the first pick, you just, I could do whatever I wanted. Um, I didn't take advantage of it or nothing, but from a basketball standpoint, I mean, everything was built around me. Um, you know, off the floor, everything was built around me. Um, it was the first time, like, I didn't even realize it. I didn't realize this until probably the middle of middle of my rookie year or whatnot, like, you like international because you don't really look at Canada like that, right? Uh -huh. So what I realized is that I had, I like, I had endorsement deals and things going on up there in Canada that was different from the States. And so that's when I realized, like, damn, you know, I'm, a, I'm like a, I'm like a international star of these, these folks. And yeah, so yeah. I was able to do so many different things. And even now when I go back up there, I, I heard somebody say it. I think LeBron said it like, it can be it can be more draft picks afterwards, but it's only one first. And I was the first ever draft pick. And, and uh -huh. every time I go back to that city, like they treat me as such. It's been nothing but love. And, you know, as the city's grown, um, you know, and I've grown when I go back, man. It's just the reception is amazing, but it was great. You know, again, Isaiah Thomas, um, the Bittal family, um, everybody embraced me, you know, and so we weren't that good. So it was like, you know, I was the one thing that everybody hung their hat on. So it was nice. Yeah. So look, coach, with you being, with you being able to give, like, you know, you giving us, you telling us stories, like key stories, do you ever like sit with some of the players now and talk to them or like they on the go? I talk to them all the time. You know, they 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 only really want to know one debate though, but I don't really debate it. Yeah. You know, they debate, you know, it's Michael Jordan and LeBron. You know, because this era they know LeBron like that. Right. You know, but my thing is is like I just don't debate it cuz number one I think they different players. True. You know, um Number two is I just think it's different eras of basketball. And uh -huh. I don't think, I, you know, every era changes. Uh -huh. You know, it's just like, you know. But could LeBron have survived in y'all era? Yeah, he could. Easily. Yeah. Okay. Man, LeBron big as hell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's number one. LeBron LeBron could have survived. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of dudes in this era that could have survived. Uh -huh. I mean, it's, it's dudes in my era that could have played in that era. In this era, and, yeah. And now, but with that being said, it's dudes in my era that couldn't have played in this era. Uh -huh. Because they just couldn't. This dudes in this area that couldn't have played in that area. So I mean, it, it goes both ways. But you know, uh, I talked to the dudes. You know, whether it's basketball, whether it's about life, life it's, yeah. it's about bumping your head. Uh -huh. You know, it's like watching out for female right, and all right, that type. Of, just right, giving them real right. game. The thing about I think the thing about me coming back to college this second time around uh -huh. is I told myself I was going to teach and I was going to give them all the free game they needed. So, you know, all you got to do is Google now. So it's just like, it's an open book. Uh -huh. And so when I tell them, sometimes, you know, I think that they look at me in amazement, like, nah, you can, you can look that up. Like, uh -huh. I'm not, you know, I'm not running from it because I can't because it's right there. But if you look that up, like, it's real. So, you know, we had to lose money back in the day to, to get our knowledge. These dudes, all they got to do is listen uh -huh. and Google. You don't got because they get first hand veteran leadership before they get it. You know what I mean? You like this, somebody who played in the league at a high level. I, I ain't telling you nothing. <laughs> telling you nothing. I think yeah. I know exactly. But you'll be surprised sometimes. And it's not just. I'm not just saying my players, but just in general. Just in general, like if you talk to probably your nephews yeah. or talk to younger cousins, it'd be like the same thing. Oh, like your sometimes we gotta learn on our own. Listen. Family don't never listen. Yeah. <laughs> Family don't listen. Your kids don't never listen. They always want to bump their head first. Uh -huh. You just got to be there to pick them up. Yeah.
Nah, that's real. What was um, what was it like playing with a young T Mac and a young Vince? And and did you see what did you see T Mac? You know, being the player that he became. Now I didn't play with Vince, so Vince, I got traded. So it was a lockout. I got traded. Mac was yeah. first. Yeah. yeah, Mac was first. So I was so first. So we, so we're, um, we used to go on trips as a team. So we went to Barbados, uh-huh. and so that was Mac rookie year. Um, so it was the summer. So he, uh, we planned so we would work out. So he, so we're playing, and man, he dunked on Sharon right, and I was like, damn, like I just. Mac was good. He was. He just. He just needed to figure out the NBA. That's all. He just. He. You. You could see it. It was just a matter of him Raw figuring talent. out. Yeah. It was just. It was just a matter of him figuring out the NBA. Um. You know. He came from high school to college. I mean, to the NBA. So it was. You know. It was just the adjustment. Once. Once he adjusted, you knew he was going. You know, take off and go. You know. But uh, man, like, he was. I mean, long. He was athletic. Um, he could shoot it, um, versatile. So, hey, you pretty much knew he was going to be one of those dudes. You just didn't know how fast he was going to be one of them dudes. So. so, like, when you said he went straight to high school, do you do you like that they, you know what I mean, make you wait a year now? And, and do you what do you think about the landscape of college? Like, I, I think it was, <clears throat> me personally, I think you should allow, you don't, you should allow high school players to go straight to pro. Like, we the only sport, you know, football don't do it now. From a physical standpoint, I don't know if you actually can. Can, yeah. But in the NBA, like, there's 18-year-olds that can play. If they play with pros in the summer, why can't they play with them for 82 games? That's how I look at it. Right. And I think, like, what it'll do is it'll, it'll, it'll cut out all the BS of college. Yeah. I think, like, you know, there has to be some protection you know, of the kid, I understand that. And so there has to be some type of middle ground where I think, like, at some point, it would be nice if the NCAA and the NBA worked together. Mm-hmm. And when you say BS in college, what you, what you speak of? I mean, if you can just, like, if you had an ability, if you had an ability to get real information, man, I just don't think I think I think that sometimes there's a disconnect. Uh-huh. You know, there's a disconnect. And so when you talk to your point, when you talking to a when you talking to a kid, when you're talking to their family, when you're talking to their handlers, but you're trying to recruit them all at the same time, it's almost like in their mind, they not looking at Damon Stoudemire as, you know, somebody that played in NBA, somebody that did X, Y, and Z, you know, that that got a lot of information. They looking at me as coach, so is it is he talking from an agenda standpoint or is he talking real? Uh, you know what I mean? So what happens is, what will happen for me when I look at it is, is there's probably a handful of guys that probably got the capability that they can just go straight from high school to the pros. You got the, you got the G League, so yeah. you might as well use the G League as a minor league. It's funded by the NBA, so why not, why not just make it all one big, one, one, you know, one big minor league, a real minor league that really helps dudes because if you're developing on that level and then they just going up, then you know you're keeping it in the house. You always gonna protect your model and you're gonna protect your protect your brand. So you're not just gonna you gonna you're gonna make sure that dudes are successful. Gotcha. You know what I mean? So and I think that that now when guys come to college, they really wanna be in college. This dudes in college just buying their time. Then it's dudes in college that's buying their time and ain't good enough that they not they not gonna figure it out, and then when it's all said and done, they don't have no options. Uh-huh. So I just think I just think it'll help everybody involved, you know, because it's not a lot of time wasted. We don't get time back, right? No, that's yeah. real. So. You don't. <laughs> you don't. So with you being in the ACC, coaching the ACC, you know what I'm saying? You know about the rivalry and the, you know, what I mean the teams in the ACC that go. How is like uh you know being you know going against schools like Duke and North Carolina like how how is the you know when I say, what I want to ask is like do you see how like they've been talking about how ACC basketball is like now that you're a part of it for sure you know we played Duke on Saturday uh, a couple Saturdays ago 
you felt it. You uh-huh. felt the energy. Um, you know, and it's crazy because I felt like, so when I was in Boston these last couple years, like being a, being somebody that never liked Boston, you know, I, I wasn't rooting for Boston right. growing up. I wasn't watching Boston, you know, uh-huh. like that. I was always rooting against them. But being actually being with Boston, what I realized, I was like, damn, people really love Boston. You know, with the game being so early, you know, and then us, you know, being right there in the game, you felt that energy in the crowd. And I remember when, you know, there was a moment where, you know, Duke was coming back and then you can hear the fans chatting. You know, you heard their fans and then our fans just drained it out. You know what I'm saying? I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm in a... I, I'm in a real ACC game right now. You know, yeah, this is okay. this is real. You know what I mean? So, you you can definitely feel that energy. It's only been one. You know, we only had one conference game, but uh-huh. you know, I'm looking forward to to being in this conference. But that and, being the yeah. first one, yeah. I know it was like, man, nah, it was it was and to real. come out like right. you know, victorious. Like I know that was like a right. Nah, it was great. It was it was a lot of energy in the building. It was exciting. We won. They stormed the court. You know, and and from the from the, you know, all the all the little, you know, people talking after the game and the texts I was getting and you know uh-huh. just, you know, every was it was that uh, I'm a, I'm here moment type for you if, if you could say that you know what not that same you know what I'm saying but it's for like for sure I yeah mean, I mean it it was it was good for those kids you know right. for me I'm just like eh, you know I played so. I felt that energy as a player before, but as a coach, I never really, I've never really like cared about all the extras as a coach. Yeah. I'm really just doing it for them kids. That's why I be, when I get mad at them, I don't get mad at them because they not doing what I say or they not doing this. I'm like, man, just just hear me, cause I can help you. Like, don't fight me. I ain't trying. Look, you don't gotta fight me. I'm yes. giving it all to you, you know, and I'm gonna give it to you. In the right way, so right. I think what happens a lot of times a lot of kids is getting lied to. They getting lied to, and sometimes uh, like you got you want to be that difference in it. I gotta tell them what time it is. Yeah, hey, and, and if if <laughs> that mean, if that, that mean <laughs> right, if that mean, if that mean I gotta be a bad the bad guy for a second, but it's gonna make you better long term. I don't don't be the kid to turn 25, 26 and be like, coach, I should have listened to you. Mm-hmm. That's all. It's like. Understand, I'm seeing something a little bit bigger than what you're seeing right now because, truth be told, it's like, forget basketball. Everybody's not gonna be a pro. Uh huh. Okay. Are so, you gonna be a better person after you leave from my coaching you at Georgia Tech? Yes. Let me, let me, let me, let me connect you with some of these people up in Midtown Atlanta so they can, uh-huh. they can help you. Cause Georgia get, Tech ain't no Georgia Tech a, a smart ass yeah, school. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's, a, a, like, it's a lot of. They they better might leave not, out yes. here with something. Yeah, they might yes. not go to the league, but they yes. might done built a, a new <laughs> yes. new stadium downtown. And, and so that, but that's but that's what I'm talking about. So I just went again going back to the beginning of our conversation. Like nobody was doing that for us when when uh-huh. when when I was coming out, and I love my I love my college coach. But it was all basketball. Uh-huh. I'm trying to get these dudes the resources and help them stay in contact with the people that they need to be in contact with because it's it's bigger than hoops. Right. I mean, but then you knowing the lingo and like you knowing the culture, you yeah. you a- are able to talk right. a certain way that you know what I mean when you know what I mean you was in school. Like you think about it, we look at the coaches from the '90s and '80s. Like it was old white coaches. And most you, of most of the like ninety percent, but it's like now somebody like you who done played in the league, like you know what I mean. You know what's going on. You might you know the music, like so it's different. You know what I'm saying? Well, definitely, def- definitely things have changed. And the one thing I will say about these kids, you know, they hear what I'm saying uh-huh. because they, they 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 I love on I love on them the right way. Let me say <laughs> that I love them the right way. But then I come right behind them. And 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 I gotta let them know what time it is, like For I sure. said. But you know, the biggest thing is they know what I've been through. Um, you do get a lot of sweat equity when with that being a pro, and I look like them. Uh-huh. <laughs> and For so sure. they can vibe with that. Since you've been here, what's your favorite uh, food spot? <laughs> Man, Whew. 
You done got hip to the wings, yeah? He right down the street from J.R. Cricket. J.R. Cricket, I know. You ain't, you ain't had no lemon pepper? Yeah, man. I've been to Cricket. You know I've been to Cricket. <laughs> <I mean, that's, laughs> Hey, I was going to cricket. I was going to crickets when I wasn't living in Atlanta. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. no, nah, J J R crickets. Yeah, you know, I mean, to to me, like honestly, and I know it's favorite hubs around the city and all that, but man, you really can't get no bad meal here. No, there you go. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It don't really matter. Uh -huh. You can be you can you can be in the city. You can you can be by the air. It, it don't even matter. Yeah, like you really the outskirts. Can't, all yeah, that, yeah, you really you really you really you really. And I can't think that's what's wrong with Atlanta, like. Even they done turned the vegan food up. Like, <laughs> like, man, come on, man. <laughs> like, I'm trying to eat healthy. Y'all done put lemon pepper in the tofu. Man, what? Hey, it's I'm lemon telling pepper you, you can't. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. man. Nah, this, yeah, this food, boy, yeah. Shit, man. Uh, go I got on. a question. So, um, you know, you spending those two years with the Celtics. What's the difference between Ime and, and Missoula in their coaching styles and approaches? I mean, you know, he may go, he may, he may more like this, you know, and I think Joe, you know, Joe is, Joe is, he, he's like that, but, you know, he's more strategic with, with the pen, you know, I think that he may is more strategic with, with the mindset, mm -hmm. and I think like, it's funny, man. So, <laughs> so the first meeting we had, the first meeting we had in Boston, uh, when we came together. Uh, so y'all remember the you get y'all had to go back and 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 check it out. Y'all remember the Adrian Broner, Adrian Broner, the can, can man. Man. oh yeah, <laughs> Mexican, yeah. African, yeah. That's what he may play. He may play that. Anybody can. And he was get like, it. anybody can get it up in here. Mm -hmm. If you don't do your job, that's fine. I don't. I yeah. ain't, you're not exempt to it. Yeah. And so, whether it was JT, JB, you know, Marcus Smart, Al, Smart, Smart yeah. Rock, it didn't matter. Like, yeah, you know. So, I think that like that was his energy every day, and and dudes rocked with him for that. And then with Joe, with Joe, it was more, you know, he he couldn't be like that on the initial. You know, the way he the, the way, yeah, yeah. circumstances, the way things mm -hmm. happen so fast. Right. Like it was on the run. So, you know, E May, he had played, he'd been in the league, played, you know, so he had a little more cachet from that standpoint. But Joe, he went about it by showing him he knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And so that was and that was the difference because you know, we did the same thing. We started off, you know, we started off slow that first year. And then the second year, you know, what we did is we continued what we actually did, mm -hmm. you the know, as the season yeah. went on. And so, you know, different styles. But I think, again, like Ime, it was more, you know, that mindset, you know, giving guys the mindset to, you know, defensive end and all the different things. But with Joe, I think that, he wanted to show those guys in his way. He knew what the hell he was doing, and he was capable of doing that job, and he did a great job, you know what I mean? So um, that, that was the difference, you know. I, I, I think that was pretty much the difference. What's up? This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, convenient meals that keep you energized on jam-packed days. Factor. That's the only one. America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service can help you fuel up for fast, Breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian-approved, ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door so you don't have to go looking. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while tracking all your holiday to-dos. Too busy with holiday plans to cook but want to make sure you're healthy and eating well? With Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the chopping and prepping and cleaning up. Gotta take the, just too much stuff when you can get a healthy meal with flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor, fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. And I know because I just warmed this one up. And all you gotta do is heat and enjoy. Oh man, I can't wait. Oh man. Here we got the buttery salmon. Oh my, 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 my. Mm. 
and the broccoli. Mmm, man. I can't wait. The plates are not that hard to take off, but when you're in a rush, you want it. So this November, get factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door. Ready in just two minutes. No prep, no mess. Oh, man. Head to factormeals.com slash 85sports50 and use code 85sports50 to get 50% off. You can't beat that. I'm beating on 50% of this before I finish. But head over there now. Tell them Nav Green sent you from Broken Play. Mm. And that's 50% off. Code 85sports50 at factormeals.com slash 85sports50 to get 50% off. Man, warm me up another one. Yeah, because I heard uh I heard Tatum recently just talk about, you know, how um email approach was like, you know, ain't nobody your friend out here. Like, nah. You know, you're playing against Brian, Brian ain't your friend. Nah. Like, KD, they ain't your nah. friend. Go nah. at them. Nah, and and he stressed that, he stressed that every day. And um, you know, I just think I just think that approach for that team, for our team at that time, we needed that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because they were young, yeah, coming in the game, getting yeah. stardom at the point. Yeah. So it's like, hey, don't fall into that. You know, the thing about it, I always say this, you know, because, you know, and I wasn't, I wasn't there, I wasn't there with with uh with Brad Stevens. You know, he wasn't, you know, he was he was the president of the yeah. team when I got there. And I was like, and I truly believe this in the pros. It's not necessarily the same in college, but in the pros, I was like. Brad Stevens didn't forget how to coach. Like Brad Stevens know what the hell he's doing. Like, you know, he he he's proven his track record says he's know what he knows what the hell he's doing. But, you know, maybe maybe some things went on a deaf voice. And you gotta actually <laughs> give him kudos for stepping aside, running things from the top and yeah. bringing in a guy because he knew that whole team. So he knew exactly knew what, what that team yeah. needed what the at, fit, at that yeah. time. That right? He couldn't give them, yeah. And so he brought in exactly what the team needed, and the team moved forward. You know, and I think, and I think, like, you know, that's the that you know Boston has that now. You know, and so now it's just a continuation because I do think they're going to eventually win one anyway because they got they the squad. Yeah, they're going they to eventually get one. So. Mm-hmm. What you think about when you saw uh, him and LeBron going at it? <laughs> I mean, you, you like that's Emma. I mean, if you know Emma, that's Emma. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like most most people don't know him like that. You know, he kind of boxed up, but you know, I, man, I know I've known dude forever and ever. You know, we both from Portland, so you know that that didn't surprise me. That's who he is. That's, that that's who he is. And he just like I said, this is the same dude that played that Adrian Broner video. Uh-huh. You know, yeah. So he got that, that mind. It ain't so no I mean, fake. I'm just saying, yeah. like this. Yeah. That's that's who he is. I mean, so look, what you've been around all these coaches, and you know, coaches getting you the game, and you just, you know, what I mean, you you taking the like. What's your approach? Did you, you know, what I mean, take a little sprinkle from everybody, or you just came in with a with a different mindset with coaching? Nah, I take I, I take that same approach. I just do a little different. Yeah, you know, I'm. <laughs> I'm big, you know, I'm big on that, but I'm big on the customer service part. I'm big on making everybody feel good in the building. For sure. And then, then I then I hit them. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I'm a little sugar and hot sauce, what I like to call it. You that know? makes sense. I give them all that sugar. Man, I love you to death, but here come the hot sauce. Sprinkling you know what I mean? on them. And then you just, I found, I found that in college, that approach is way better. Mm-hmm. In the pros, it's totally different. I just think when you coaching in the pros, you gotta you gotta egos. you gotta be relationship yeah, driven, uh, but you gotta know how to manage egos, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and you gotta manage different personalities. And no, whether it's the pros or whether it's college, you got twelve dudes on the team that got twelve different ways of doing the same thing. So you gotta be able to relate to that dude in that moment. Each and every day, and it don't matter. So that's what does that mean? That mean you might have to go down there where they shooting free throws, and I think a lot of times we get locked into the X's and O's of mm-hmm. it. Mm-mm. It's the customer service. You don't know what went on with dude. 
Right. You know, well, maybe he could be going maybe, through he something got some, maybe, he got some, maybe he got some stuff Bad going on at home. Type of stuff. You know, whatever that looks like. So you got to, you know, you got to really be in tune. And then you got to have assistance. You got to have people that's on your staff that's really in tune with it as well. Like, you just can't. You can't get you the, the, you can't get lost in the basketball. You got to get lost in the process of building a relationship with these dudes the same way. Coach, you still hooping with them? Like you'll still I'm get good. out? I'm good. I'm good, man. <laughs> My little nigga. Like you might take a shot or two, but ain't Boy. no. I turned 50 this past year, and my little knees just don't agree with it. Yeah. And this Atlanta weather just got cold. So I know. So, so, yeah, well, I tell you what, I knew it was getting cold because my knees was telling me. <laughs> when that weather get cold, I know exactly what's going on outside. Hey, it gets to the point where you got to start warming that cold. Yes, sir. See, see, them college kids, they might not know about warming no cold. Nah, like, they nah. just jump in there and let the ice drift off. You be warming your car, Greg? Yes, sir, of course. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So look, are you expect are you exceeding expectations right now? Like, what was your goal coming in at the Georgia Tech job? Like, what? Cause I'm saying, I ain't gonna be honest. being honest. Being an underdog going against Duke and to get a win out of that, yeah. like I know the all right. This is this a, yeah. man. This yeah, a that big check. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it, but I know you coaching to win and coaching to develop, and you can't go off one right, win right, and this yeah, win. Right. But it's like right. I know you got to be thinking like. I'm on the right track. The guys are learning. Well, coming in, right, I didn't want to put no expectation on it because uh -huh. I got to learn my team. And so for sure. I know what change look like. Kids don't know what change look like. I'm play, I played for like five, six coaches mm -hmm. in the NBA. So I know what that looked like. And I just wanted to make sure that I taught them what I needed them to know. And so um, as we're moving forward now, you know, I think we're exceeding expectation only from the standpoint of I didn't see it this early. Mm -hmm. I would be lying if I said I didn't see it this early. Now, with that being said, have they paid the price to win? Yeah, they've paid the price. Mm -hmm. But how does that translate? You don't know how quick or how fast. And so what happens is, is like I told them, unfortunately, see, y'all moved the needle already. So <laughs> we got to get better. Right. So it's not going to get no easier. Mm -hmm. So I'm leaning on them a little bit more now, you know, mm -hmm. because we don't have the same, to your point, we don't have the same leeway because antennas is going up when we coming in the gym. Mm -hmm. And so that's what they got to yeah, understand. Yeah, like, yeah, so you got to tell People see y'all on the schedule now and yes. say, no, yes. we might got to play yes. this one for real. Yes, but yeah. you got a team, but you got a team that collectively hasn't won enough together. So they don't know what that look like. Mm -hmm. They don't know what that look like. And so we got to speed them up. Me and the staff got to speed them up so they understand what that look like, you know, because you're not the underdog. Gotcha. You know, you people expect to have an expectation of you when you come out, and that's the whole thing. For me, it's the presentation of it. What do mm -hmm. my team look like when we walk on the floor? Do we know what we do? It look like we know what we're doing. Can you watch us and be like, I know what Coach Stoudemire is trying to do mm -hmm. here at Tech. Like, that's that's the biggest thing for me. Gotcha. So when you say that, I, I'm going to ask you this. Who are some underdogs in the league that you felt like didn't get enough credit when you played with them or somebody you'd be like, no, but it was a dog. Mm. Mm. Like somebody, you know, like if you if mention like, you don't hear their name yeah, enough. Bonzi. Bonzi. Huh? Like yeah, Bonzi was, yeah. yeah Bonzi was like He that. was on his team. Bonzi was like, about, like that. He, he probably played he against play again. Like, he might play it against. He'd be like, damn, I don't want to play. <laughs> you know what? I'm a, I, I, you know, injuries, injuries have cost some guys. Uh -huh. But I think people forgot about Baron Davis. <laughs> Hell yeah. Sure. People forgot about Baron Davis. Nah. Well, I can't call him that nickname no more, but you know, like, we used to say B. Diddy. Like, B. Diddy was a bad boy. Now I'm saying we ain't gonna call him that nickname no more. I'll beep it out. Yeah. <laughs> but Barry Davis, like, that, that was the only nickname we knew of him, yeah. but it's like, boy, yeah. he was gay. Dunk on you, yep. cross you yeah. up. I, I, think, uh, I think that for whatever reason, you know, people forgot about Steph. They forgot about Stephon Marbury. Mm. They forgot about him. Starberry. Um, I think uh You love point guard. Yeah. I mean, I'm most of the dudes that I played against, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like who I had you to have bump, to go against who I had to stuff bump like against. that, yeah. You know, like I would say like people haven't 
it's funny because with the NBA, like as 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 time goes on, like new people emerge, and so you forget about the old guard, uh -huh. right? And I'm gonna say like somebody I played against it, like he still don't he. He don't get enough credits. The streets talk about him in this way, but they need to talk about him this way in, in NBA history. Like, nobody really give uh, Allen a lot of the credit that I think right. he deserves. Yeah. Like, let's just be, let's call it what it is. Like, what he was doing. Pound for pound. What he was doing. And everything that came with it. And y'all went too like, far when y'all came in the nah, league. Nah, we, we went a year apart. Yeah, no, I just so thought I about just, it. So I'm just saying, like, mm -hmm. what he was doing, how he was doing it, um, you know, it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. Like, he just don't get the credit. He did it for a long yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he did it for so long. Yes, he when did. When they talking NBA legends and stuff, like, yeah. on the, on the, you know what I mean, on the news, yeah. I mean, all, all that goes and say, like, if we in barbershops, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. don't bring up AI. We just talking, yeah, we bring yeah. up AI. But they don't. Nah, and the and that's thing, politics. And the thing about it, you start, we start, we start moving the needle for different people. Whether ah, man, he his, his numbers was there, but the shooting percentage, man, forget the shooting percentage. I watched. He him. took he took shots that he thought he could make because that's what his team needed him to take uh -huh. to win the game. You know what I mean? So he wasn't. When the shot clock was going out, he wasn't holding the ball to save his percentage. He thought he could make every shot. Coach Stoudemire, how you feel when you see like players you played with and players you played against, now they kids in the league? Like you got people like Sabonis' son is in the league. And... Man, it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, I remember. So in our locker room in Portland, uh -huh. you had Doma Sabonis. Sacramento Kings, mm -hmm. Cole Anthony, Greg was Greg. with us. You had, you know, Pip's son mm -hmm. that, that was with the Lakers, little Scotty. I feel like I'm missing one. I think it might have been one more. And that was one locker room. I can't remember, I can't remember who the other one, but it's Nah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy to see what's good. It's crazy for me. It's crazy for me. I played against LeBron. Uh -huh. See him doing what he's doing. I coached Mike Conley, played with Mike Conley. I coached Kyle Lowry, I played with Kyle Lowry. I played against Al Horford, I coached Al Horford. Uh -huh. Like, so it's uh <laughs> But to see what LeBron doing at his age now. That's unheard of, man. Man, dude, dude is amazing. Yeah. I, I mean He just won MVP of the, you know, the end season tournament that they, they started, but like to win MVP at that age. Yeah, dude's amazing. The way he keeps his body. Right. Forget the basketball. I mean, the to me, like the way he's been able to stay in shape, uh -huh. the way the way he ha he's he hasn't had no slippage with that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, shit, he look like he can play another. He look like he got another five, six years in him. Be honest Easy. with you. He do. You know what I mean? He do. <laughs> like, hey, before this year, I'm like, maybe, you know, one or two more years. If he, he could, man, that man can play the E50, man. Facts. Like, you know what I'm saying? But at a high level, at least four years. Yeah, facts. Man, Coach, we appreciate you pushing up on us, man. You know, good luck this season. We, I felt like, you know, the timing was right that you came. You know what I'm saying? When you did, because we believe in Georgia Tech right now. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. Yeah, we believe in Georgia Tech. Because <laughs> you know, like, a lot of people, in, if you get you go around the city, you'll know, like, Georgia could win, but it ain't ain't the same if Tech win, because right. it's like... Because Georgia ain't the yeah, city. Yeah, yeah Georgia right. ain't the city. Georgia Tech in the city right by that varsity. So it's like, you know, <laughs> I hate to be putting food places inside, no, no way it's at. But, but no, nah, it's like, you know what I'm saying? You you bringing the field to the city. And plus, like, if you know basketball and don't watch basketball, you know who Damon Stoudemire is. And now to find out who Coach Stoudemire is, who want, you know, the kids to do better. It's bigger right. than basketball. Yeah. So it's like. It's a new era. Too. It's a new era. So right. Georgia Tech is right. legendary. Like, right. you know. Because had... a lot of players done came from Georgia yeah, Tech like, to go to the league. But no, no now doubt. it's like. Something no to look and forward legendary to. Legendary coaches too. You know no doubt. So you you join that rank. No doubt. So Appreciate we wish that. you nothing but 
number of success with appreciate it, Appreciate that. And, appreciate uh, that. We got a basketball. If you can sign it. Uh, we got a permanent marker somewhere around here. We'll get it. Man, I'm going to I'm gonna have to bring you all Adidas basketball, man. Oh, oh yeah. dude. Please do. We yeah. Are. Yeah, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a bring a personal Adidas basketball over here so y'all have on the hey, set to get that good sign. I know you offered that. I don't want to ask too much. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't, any kind of memorabilia you got. <laughs> if you got an old jersey, you don't want to sign it with. We're going to put it on the wall. We ain't start buying frames yet, but we're going to get our frames. All right. We got about two or three jerseys, but now, nah, Coach, we appreciate you. Pushing up on us and you know what I mean just kicking and talking when you yes, know yes, just thanks. being a player, man. Being you are until it translate with how you handle your team. Yeah. So thank good luck this season, man. Thank you. Appreciate you. Right. Yes, sir.